الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين Indeed, all praises due to Allah We praise him, seek his aid and ask his forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves And from the evils of our actions Whom several Allah guides, none can lead astray And whom several Allah leads astray, none can guide I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except for Allah alone having no partner and I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave in his messenger. To proceed, probably the best of talks beyond any doubt is the Quran and the best of guidance is the guidance of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and probably the most evil of all matters are the ones innovated for every newly innovated matter in Islam is an innovation and every innovation in Islam is a misguidance and every misguidance will lead to the hellfire. This is the fourth part of our topic, which is the etiquette of making the supplication, the dua, in which we have discussed in the previous talks. That is, the dua is very important for very early. The dua is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the prophets, all of them, to seek his dua. That is, the dua is the ibadah. The ibadah is the worship. So the dua is the ibadah. So to worship Allah through the dua, for verily the dua is important can be seen for how many crises that have been pushed away by the dua, how many we've seen so many problems that have been resolved for the dua, how many sins and disobedience have been forgiven through the dua, how many misguided people they asked Allah Azza wa through the dua to guide them and they were guided, how many people who were ill and they were asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for cure, and Allah azza wa jal had cured them. How many people who were uh, poor, and they've asked Allah azza wa jal to give them richness, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them the money. How many people who've been deprived from progeny and offsprings, and yet Allah azza wa jal through the dua and the supplication had granted them children. How many dua uh, of those people who've been under oppression, and Allah azza wa jal lifted the oppression away from them, because of their dua, how many people who were engaged with their enemies and they've asked Allah Azza wa Jal with the dua to grant them the victory and the victory was there. So the dua basically it benefits whether that Allah Azza wa Jal had fulfilled that dua, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had kept this dua for you in the hereafter, whether Allah Azza wa Jal will expel and remove away a harm which is equivalent to the dua that you have asked. So it is very important to understand the importance of the dua. Number one, we need to know that we are in need of Allah in everything. We are the poor and Allah is the rich. So we are in need of Allah in everything. We are in need of Allah to give us the goods and push away the evils. We are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know the haqq from the battle. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah Fatir, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, whether it's believers or disbelievers, whether they are righteous or not righteous, you are the poor people to Allah. You are the one who need. Wallahu wal ghani wal hamid. And Allah is the rich and He is the praiseworthy. So, as a person, regardless of how much of control that you have from this dunya, how much richness that you have, you are still poor to Allah. Azza wa Jal. You are still in need of Allah. Azza wa Jal. Regardless of how much rank you have elevated in this dunya, regardless of the part that you have given, you are still poor in need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal, in this hadith, which is a mighty hadith, hadith that is Abu Idris al-Khawlani, from the authority of Abu Dhar radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, and here the hadith is a hadith, we call it hadith Qudsi, hadith Qudsi or Qudusi, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke it and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying it. So it is the words of Allah, spoken literally word for word by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The difference between this and the Quran is that it is not a Quran by which that every letter that you speak is basically uh, uh, is a, is a, is a, is a rewardable. Like when you say Alif, Lam, Mim, every letter will contain 10 hasanat. This hadith is not similar to that Quran, but it's the words of Allah. So basically it is the, you could say, a higher rank of this hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu had said, and every time Abu Idris Al-Khawlani, he mentions this hadith, he would kneel onto his knees. Because of the power of this hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah the exalted is saying, the glories, O oh my slaves, I have prohibited myself injustice, oppression, and have made oppression unlawful for you. So do not oppress one another. O oh my slave, all of you are liable to make mistakes. 
to err except the one whom I guide on the right path. So seek guidance from me so that I will guide you to the right path. O oh, my slave, all of you are hungry except the one whom I feed. So ask food from me and I will feed you. O oh, my slaves, all of you are naked except those whom I clothe. So ask clothing from me and I shall clothe you. O oh, my slave, you commit sin day and night. You commit the sins day and night. And I forgive all the sins. So seek forgiveness and I shall forgive you. O oh, my slaves, you can neither do me any harm nor can you do me any good. O oh, my slaves, if you were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you is to be as pious as the most pious heart of any man of you, that I would not, it would not decrease anything of my dominion. O oh, my slave, with the first of you, the last of you, the human of you, and the jinn of you, is to be as wicked as the most wicked heart of any man of you that would not decrease my dominion in anything. O oh, my slaves, with the first of you, the last of you, the human of you, the jinn of you, uh, were to be standing in one place and making a request, all of you one go, that is from me, and were I to give everyone what he had requested, it would not decrease what I have any more than a needle decreasing something from the sea if it is to be put into it. Oh, my slave, it is but your deeds that I reckon for you, and then I recompense you for. So let me, or let Allah, he said, let him who finds good, that is in the hereafter, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and let him who finds other than that blame no one except for himself. This is a mighty hadith, as I said, from the Prophet Sallallahu that is speaking about the Almighty Azza wa showing that we are in need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are, regardless of the power that we have, we are still, we have to ask Allah Azza wa Jal. We don't have any control to any benefit or any harm. We are basically, so whom Allah Azza wa Jal did not, was not kind to him and grant him the guidance and grant him the provision, then he is going to be deprived from them in this dunya. And whom Allah did not, was not kind to him and grant him the forgiveness of his sins, then his sins will doom him in the hereafter. So we are basically in need to Allah Azza wa in the dunya and in the akhirah. Now, I'm going to ask a question here. So what are the most important things that the Muslim should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? You should be seeking those things day and night. So, because some people, they don't know what to ask. They're always concerned about their, you know, making their dunya better. So the person needs to know, he has to ask those things who are in need of in his deen and in his dunya. Remember, Allah's treasure, it will not decrease. Allah Azza wa Jalla, he says, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا عِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنُ There is nothing that you think about except that we have treasures of it, which is endless. It will not finish. And also, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَمَا نُنَزِلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدَرٍ مَعْلُومٍ And we do not bring except for something which is already been, you know, which is, which is known to us. That is قَدَرٍ مَعْلُومٍ Right. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, ask me. وَسَرُ اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Ask Allah from His bounty. And Allah, as I said a number of times in the previous three parts, that Allah, Azza wa Jal, will be angry if you don't ask him. So you are, as a person who's a slave, being commanded to ask Allah Azza wa Jal. So those are the important things. Number one, ask him for the guidance on the straight path. For verily the Prophet, so Allah Azza wa Jal in his Quran, he said, This is the surah that you read every Jumu'ah, and I'm sure that you've read it as well in the Jumu'ah today. Whom Allah guides, then he's the one who's guided. And he was the one who did not guide, then you will not find for him waliyan murshida, a friend that he will guide him to the right path. So if you ask, guidance is the best. And in the hadith, which is the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya ibadi kullukum ballun illa man hadaytu. Fastahduni ahdikum. Oh, slaves of Allah, all of you be misguided, except for the one whom I guide. So ask me guidance and I will guide you to the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to ask for this guidance of the straight path 17 times a day in our obligatory prayer in the Fatiha. And that is why the Prophet وسلم, was keen to teach his ummah in their dua, that is to ask Allah Azza wa Jal in is the guidance. So 
he was to say as well in the dua that you opening supplication of your in your prayer ihdini lima khtulifa fihi min al haqq bi idnik oh lord guide me to what is being controversial from the haqq innaka tahdi man tasha'u ila siratin mustaqim fadhil you guide whomsoever you will to the straight path also the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was saying in another supplication ihdini li ahsan al akhlaq la yahdi li ahsanha illa an O oh Lord, guide me to the best of the manners. No one guide to the best of the, man the manners except for you. Wasrif anni sayyiha and remove away from me the bad of it, the bad of the manners. Oh, but nobody can remove the bad away from me except for you. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to teach his companions to ask Allah the Almighty the guidance. So he said to Ali ibn Abi Talib one day, Qul, say, Allahumma inni as'aluk al huda wa salam. Oh Lord, I ask you the guidance and to be on the correct path. Also, he had taught al Hussein and al Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu an in his uh, witter dua, Allahumma hadini fi man hadayt, wa'afini fi man afayt, O Lord, guide me amongst the ones whom you have guided. So, you have to ask Allah so day and night to guide you to the straight path. This is the first thing. That's the most important one. Second one, upon you as well to ask your Lord, that is, to forgive you the sins. But no one can forgive the sins except for him, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who forgives all the sins for the one who repents. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى And verily, I am a forgiver for those who had repented to me and he had believed and he did a good righteous deed and he had been guided. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ يَجْدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا He who does bad things or wrongs himself, then he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. He will find Allah is the oft forgiving, the oft merciful. Also in the hadith, which is hadith again, Qudsi, the Prophet he said, Allah the Almighty said, يَا بْنَ آدَمْ O son of Adam, إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي that regardless of how much you ask for me and you seek forgiveness for me, I will forgive you regardless. O son of Adam, if your sins is to reach the clouds of the heavens, then you sought my forgiveness. I will forgive for you and I it will not harm me. Adam, O son of Adam, oh, you come to me to with the lamp filled up with all sins and all types of sins and then you have met me did not worship anything beside me did not commit shirk with me i would have come to you with as much as of the earth filled with forgiveness prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said you are nas o oh people tubu ilallah repent to allah for verily inni atubu ilayhi fil yawmi mi'ata marra i I, for verily, I seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal in every time, 100 times, 100 times. Listen to Umar, to Abdullah ibn Umar, he said. Verily, Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, we used to camp for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one gathering, one sitting. It, that is 100 times, 100 times, what? Saying, Rabbi ghfirli wa tub alayya innaka anta tawwabu rahim. Oh Lord, forgive for me. And and to alayya and accept my repentance for very you are the oft forgiver the oft repentance so prophet sallallahu he said he who had said astaghfirullah our lord i seek forgiveness of allah alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum wa atubu ilayh al the one who's gotten is no god beside him al hayyu al qayyum the life al qayyum the sustenance or atubu ilayh and i seek forgiveness for him ghufir lahu wa in kana farra min al zahr it will be forgiven for him even if he has to run away from the battle when the, uh, the army advances. So this is a mighty sin, yet Allah will forgive it as long as you seek forgiveness. So we've got now asking forgiveness, asking for the guidance also from the important thing that the person should ask for as well is to ask Allah Azza wa Jal paradise, to ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala paradise. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal as well to keep you away from the hellfire. So we ask in Allah paradise and we ask in Allah Azza wa Jal from, to keep away from the hellfire. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارُ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسِ He who had been removed from the fire and pushed away from the fire. زُحْزِح is like heavy, heavy thing. قَالْ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ and he made into paradise then he is successful. 
And also the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he who had asked Jannah three times, Al Jannah would say, Allahumma dkhilhu al Jannah. Oh Lord, make him to enter me, enter the Jannah. Woman istajara min al nar three times, he would sought forgiveness from the hellfire. Three times, the fire would say, Oh Lord, make him to be seeking refuge from the fire. So always ask Allah Azza wa for Jannah at least three times a day and ask Allah Azza wa to save you from the hellfire at least three times a day. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to a man, what do you say in the prayer? He said, well, I'm not really good in saying what you say and what Mu'ad had said, dun, 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 dun. but every time I make the shahud, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal Hail Paradise and I ask, uh, and I ask, uh, so when I make the prayer, when I'm reading the Fatiha, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal the Jannah and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to keep me away from the hellfire. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, don't worry, we are doing the same thing, me and Mu'ad. And this is the boy who had prayed and he did not, Continue the prayer behind Mu'ad. It's a long story, but basically the Prophet ﷺ, he said, this is what we are all about. What we are saying to Allah, to ask Allah Azza wa to grant us paradise and save us from the hellfire. So, Prophet ﷺ used to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannata ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal. Oh Lord, I ask you paradise. And whatever get me closer to paradise, whether from the sayings or from the actions. Wa a'udhu bika na min al-nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal. And I seek refuge in you, O oh Lord, from the hellfire. And whatever gets me closer to the fire, from, whether it's from the sayings or the actions. Also, the person needs to know that he should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Afu, the pardon, Al-Afiya in the dunya wal akhirah Al-Afu wal afiyah So we go now, we ask Allah Azza wa for the guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paradise and keep us from the hellfire. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal Al-Afu wal afiyah The uncle of the Prophet Sallam Al-Abbas. He came to the Prophet Sallam and said, Messenger of Allah, teach me something I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said to him, O oh, uncle, said Allah al -afiyah. ask Allah Azza al -afiyah. So I stayed for some days, and then I came back again, the messenger of Allah. Oh, teach me something, I asked Allah Azza said, I said to you, uncle, O oh, Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet of Allah, ask Allah al -afiyah. Fi dunya wal -akhira. in this dunya and hereafter. Also Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet Sallallahu he said on top of the pulpit, said Allah al wa al Mubarili ask Allah Azza wa Jal, Al-Afu, pardon, Al-Afiyah, health, health in this dunya, health in the Akhir, health in the dunya, that means to be healthy and to be not diseased. And also, health in the Akhirah, that means to be safe from the hellfire. فَإِنَّ أَحَدًا لَمْ يُعْطَى بَعْدَ الْيَقِينِ خَيْرًا مِنَ الْعَافِيَةِ Nobody has been given after being certainty, after La ilaha illallah, except better than Al-Hafiyah. So this is the best thing that you've been given and being granted. This is from the supplication of the Prophet. Also, from the important things that the person should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for as well, that to ask him to be affirmed on the religion. Because the person is wavy, you know, we don't know what's going to happen to him. We know a friend of ours who was, MashaAllah, be it and everything, now he is mulhid. He is as, as, he's an atheist. اللهم يا رب يا مثبت القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على دينك for verily this is fitan they are like waving like the sea and the person becomes a believer in the morning a disbeliever in the evening and vice versa as well why because he was he was taught to sell his religion why for the sake of the dunya so many people had knocked on the gates of those monarchs and those kings and because of the money and the fame and all of that they have sold their deen they have sold their deen because of that so the sensible man, he would ask Allah Azza wa Jal to affirm him on Islam. Allahumma thabbitni ala deen. Also, Anas, he said that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya wali al-Islami wa ahli, basikni bihi hatta alqa. O Lord, the one who is the protector of Islam and the protector of the Muslims, make me to hold on to Islam until I see you. This is who is saying it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we say, O Lord, Ya wali al-Islami wa ahli, basikna bihi. وَثَبِّتْنَا حَتَّى نَلْقَى We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, Allahumma ya musarrif al-qulub, sarrif qulubana ala ta'atik. O Lord, the one who is making the hearts goes any direction that you want, make our heart to be affirmed onto your obedience. Make our heart to be affirmed onto your deen. 
this is the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. He used to say it according to Salama, according to the, the, the companions. They used to hear the Prophet of Allah saying this dua. Um Salama, she said, Messenger of Allah. Why do you say all the time, Ya Muqallib al Qulub Thabit Qalbi Ala Dini? Oh, the one who, oh Lord, the one who affirms the heart, affirm my heart upon your religion. Why are you saying this? Because you are the Prophet. I mean, you, how, how can it be? I mean, you are the Prophet. You're asking this all the time. Oh Lord, the one who affirms the heart, affirm my heart onto your religion, and you are a Prophet? So the Prophet said, he said Ya Umm Salama, O oh, Umm Salama. For verily, not a single person from the son of Adam, except that his heart is between two fingers of the fingers of Allah, the Almighty. Insha'a aqama wa insha'a azar. But very, either he will put him on the haq or put him on the bottom. Or they will give him the guidance or he will put him on the path of misguidance. So your heart is fluctuating between haq and batil. Your heart, which is a small one between the power and the mighty fingers of Allah. You could put it this way and put it that way. So don't you ever think, oh, I guarantee paradise. No way I could be misguided. I bunk as I am, mashallah, like this. I could go and listen to the innovators and I could go and mix up with those people who are not Muslims and you think you are affirmed. Wallahi, even if you had to put one foot in paradise and the other foot outside paradise, you can't guarantee paradise. So be careful. So ask Allah Azza wa Jal to unfirm your heart. Prophet Sallam, one of his duas used to say, Allahumma aslih li deeni. Amri. O Lord, fix my religion. For very, this is the one who's going to give me the savior, the salvation. And fix my dunya. For very, this is my living. For very, fix for me akhirah. That is in the akhirah, hereafter, where there is, I'm going to go return. And make this life for me an extra in good and abundance and everything. And make the death for me a relaxation from every evil. The Prophet is always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to, as well, there's another issue which is to ask Allah azza wa jal to affirm this, 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 this ni'mah upon you. Allah gave you this ni'mah. Give you the nu'ya of the, the money. Give you the ni'mah of the health. Give you the ni'mah of able to eat. Give you the ni'mah to, as well to be affirmed with the religion. So ask Allah Azza wa Jal to affirm this ni'mah. Just if you ask him to affirm your heart unto the deen, ask him as well to make this ni'mah, blessings, the bounty, is there all the time. Because it's a crisis. If you've been stripped away, taken away from this ni'mah of yours, Allah al-Musta'a. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik. O oh Lord, I seek refuge in you from that, that is that your, you, 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 the removal of your bounty. And also your afiyah, that is, will turn over. And suddenly that your anger comes on to me. And all of that will bring the wrath upon me. So this is another issue. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to keep this bounty upon him. Also from the dua that the Prophet used to say after the Fajr in the, in the morning, and that is to ask him for a, a good knowledge, a beneficial knowledge, and ask him as well for good offsprings and also good health all the time and also a, 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 a victory upon the enemies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَقُلْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي عِلْمًا And say, O Lord, increase me knowledge. Allah Azza wa Jal did not say that I accept in the knowledge. That is to increase me more into what? Into the knowledge. Prophet Sallam, every time he finishes the prayer of the Fajr, he will say, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'ah, wa rizqan tayyiba, wa amalan mutakabbala. O oh Lord, I ask you, ilman nafi'ah, beneficial knowledge. Wa rizqan tayyiba, halal rizq, halal provision. Wa amalan mutakabbala, and that is an action, a deed, which is being accepted by you, Almighty. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min qalbin la yakhsha' wa du'a'in la yusma' wa nafsin la tashba' wa ilmin la yafa'. O oh Lord, I seek refuge in you from these four things. Qalbin la yakhsha' Qalbin la yakhsha' a heart which does not submit. Wa du'a'in la yusma' and a supplication which will not be heard, which will not be fulfilled by you. Wa nafsin la tashba' and a soul which will never be satisfied, is always greedy. وَعِلْمٍ لَا يَنْفَعْ And a knowledge which is not beneficial. So the person should all the time ask for a beneficial knowledge. And the beneficial knowledge is 
the knowledge of Al-Kitab was Sunnah. That knowledge of physics or anything apart from that, the knowledge of Al-Qal Allah, Qal Rasul. And also upon you to ask Allah Azza wa Jal for the good progeny, offsprings, akhi, just like the prophets. All of them they ask, Hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. Ah, we ask, O oh, your Lord, to grant us from our spouses, from our wives, qurrata a'yun. That is what? An, or of, of progeny and the descendants of ours and offsprings. Qurrata a'yun, that means something to please our eyes. Somebody who is righteous. Wallahi, this is a person who has got his children upon the deen. He is on top of the world, regardless of how much money he's got. So, when you marry your wife, please make sure that from the beginning you start investing in this huge project to produce healthy children. Because it's not easy. It's a lifetime project. This project will give its fruits later on when your children, you see them, mashaAllah, upon the deen, calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal to grant you Jannah, O Father, O Mother, Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, this is the, this is the success. So listen to this dua. This dua that the Prophet Sallam used to say every time he gives, you know, comes out from the gathering, okay, he will come and say these following words. اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول بيننا وبين معاصيك. I think we could say that as well in Dua al-Qurut al-Wutr. اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك. Oh Lord, give us from our خشية to you, that is our fear of you, something that will prevent us to go and sin against you. ومن طاعتك ما تبلغ به تبلغنا به جنتك. And from your obedience. Something that will make us get to your Jannah. So, O oh Lord, give us from your fear a portion that will make us, you know, something that will prevent us from going into sinning against you. And also from your obedience, a portion that will make us reach your paradise and enter it. And also give us from the certainty of you, O oh Lord, that you are the Almighty. Something that will make the the crisis that we are afflicted with to be nothing. Because when we know Allah is the controller of everything, we have powerful iman into Allah Azza wa Jal, this will make us feel that this crisis that takes place in the dunya is nothing. Allahumma mati'na bi asma'ina wa absarina wa quwwatina ma ahyaytana. O Lord, make us to enjoy our hearing, our seeing, our power, as long as you are making us alive, وَجْعَلْهُ الْوَارِثَ مِنَّا And make it is the one that is to be inherited of us. وَجْعَلْ ثَأْرَنَا عَلَى مَنْ ظَلَمَنَا And make our vendetta, our revenge onto the ones who had wronged us. وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى مَنْ عَدَانَا And give us victory upon those who had showed enmity towards us. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مُصِيبَتَنَا فِي دِينِنَا And do not make our musiba, our problem, our crisis in our religion. Because if the process is in our religion, that's a disaster. Do not make the dunya is to be the one we are all the time seeking for. That is the one that we are trying to achieve. And not the end of our knowledge. And do not, O oh Lord, impose upon us somebody who has no mercy upon us. Okay. So that's the importance of the dua, ya ikhwani. And that is the important things that you should be asking the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, after all of this, who is the one who is deprived? The one who is deprived is the one who has been deprived from the dua. The one who has been deprived is the one who has been deprived to ask Allah azza wa jal. The one who has been deprived is the one who doesn't say, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, O Lord, O Lord. The one who has been deprived is the one he hears about paradise from the Quran and the Sunnah and he hears about the pleasure which is in paradise and then he never says oh Lord grant me Jannah the one who's been deprived is the one who hears about the hellfire from the Kitab and the Sunnah and he hears about the punishment the severe torment in it and then he does not say oh Lord save me from the hellfire the deprived one is the one whom Allah he knows that Allah Azza wa Jal he brings down from the heavens he brings down himself from the heavens he descends down from the heavens in the last third of the night, yet he does not wake up at that time. And he asks Allah Azza wa Jal, because Allah, he says, Hal min da'in 
Is there anyone who calls upon me and I will respond? Is there anybody who's seeking forgiveness and I will give him his forgiveness? Anybody's asking me anything and I will grant him. You are the one who's deprived. You know, ask Allah Azza wa Jal. The one who is being deprived, the one who knows that Allah Azza wa Jal is the self-sufficient, is the rich, and he know and he gives and he knows that he gives for everything that he asks, yet he does not ask his Lord. This is the one who's been deprived. The one who is all the time, dunya, 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 and there is no dua. He's got a heart which is oblivious. This is the one who's been deprived. So remember to take, as we say, or Sheikh Albani has got a saying, which he had learned from the other scholars, when your wind start to move, uh, take advantage of it. When your wind, when your breeze start to move, take advantage of it. So, so if you are in a ship and you need to sail, the wind had you know, started to gust or to, 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 to move, well, take advantage of it and start moving your ship. Same thing when you have something like an opportunity for you that you could see there. Do not wait, do not waste that opportunity. We have here Zakaria, a prophet. Zakaria, he was looking after Maryam. And Zakaria, every time he goes to Maryam when she's in the mihrab, he will find with her provision, rizq. So he would say, Ya Maryam, anna lakiha. Oh Maryam, how did you get this? She said, qalat huwa min indillah. This is from Allah. Inna Allah yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Allah grants whosoever he wills without any hisab. Hisab, without any reckoning, without, I'm going to say to you, this is 50 pound, 20, 100 pound. No, it gives you. Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabbah. Look at that, how Zakariya invested. Straight away, this is the moment when Zakariya, the prophet, called out upon his Lord. What did he call upon him? What? قال حبلي من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء. He was a barren. His wife he was a barren. Oh Lord, provide me offspring that is طيبة. Not just any offspring. طيبة, righteous, pious. So Allah Azza wa Jalla straight away gave him the that is the response by sending him angel. إن الله يبشرك بيحيا. Ah, يحيا. خلاص. Allah has given you that is يحيا. To the end of the verses. So, if you've been deprived from the children, deprived from the progeny, deprived from the descendants, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people who are ill entering the hospital, ask Allah azza wa jalla, just to don't think that this is the remedy is going to be with the hands of the doctor. The doctor could give you anything, but it will not be, could give you medicine, but it will not be beneficial. Everything is in the hands of Allah azza wa jalla. So, what did Jesus say? What the Prophet said? Allahumma matti'na bi asma'ina wa absarina wa quwwatina ma ahyaytana. Okay, so remember that. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal. For finally, even those who were in the Jannah, in the Jannah, Allah Azza wa Jal talks about them that in the dunya they were, they, they, they didn't go on to sleep. They used to uh, sleep but little. Their sides forsake the beds. I mean, they don't sleep. Why? Asking the Lord خوف, in fear and hoping that Allah Azza will grant him paradise. What do they want? They want Allah Azza wa Jal to keep away them or to keep them away from the hellfire. So the dua is going to benefit you. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the dua is either going to be fulfilled or it's going to be saved for you in the hereafter or something bad equivalent to what you have supplicated for will be pushed away from you. So don't be deprived. Ask the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Allah azza wa jal uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people who will pay heat and always as well ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the dua and as uh, uh, Umar al-Khattab, he said, I'm not afraid of Allah will fulfill the dua. I'm afraid that Allah will not grant me and inspire me the right words to ask him. It's all you have to do just to have the right word and ask the Almighty in the right place at the right time. Don't worry about Allah fulfilling that. Just worry about you being inspired with those words at that time. So I'll leave inshallah the time uh, and, uh, for the questions and answers. And before I do that, 
have been asked to say a word regarding what is taking place in America, which is the racism. Before this taking place, I have sent a video to everybody, and I Jazamullah khair, and lots of people had thanked me for that video, which I saw it as in very good. I took a clip of that. Some people sending me, this is the original of this video in YouTube, because they've seen it and they're searching it on YouTube. Every video that you've got, it has been originated from YouTube. So that is, you know, the case. But we wanted just that clip. We don't want the whole thing. The clip which is talking about racism had showed us that the in the in the Quran that the racism is not there at all. It's been abolished. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as in the video says, he's not, for example, uh, uh, non-racist. No, he's anti-racist. What does that mean? Anti-racist means that you are against racism. Anti-racist means that you speak in everything to be against racism. There is no difference between an Arab or a non-Arab except by taqwa, piety. This is the message. How taqwa, how pious to you to Allah Azza wa Jal. When the Islam came, it united between all these Diversity of communities. So we had, for example, Al Miqdad al Aswad, Quraysh. We had on the other side Bilal al Habashi from Abyssinia, black. He was a slave, united. We, the, and also we had Suhaib al Rumi, Rumi from Rome, Rome, Suhaib al Rumi. He was as well Salman al Farisi. All of them come together, subhanAllah, united. There's nothing, no difference. They went, and as well, one of those things that in our Islam, the pillars of Islam, is Hajj. And Hajj is the ultimate of ironing all the differences between everybody. I know a person who had embraced Islam. He was a, an actor. I can't remember his name. Black person. Okay. Uh, uh, and he was a famous actor, actually. And he was caught by one of the media uh, making the Hajj, and they interviewed him. He said, the Hajj makes me feel, subhanAllah, you see, he said, he himself is rich, but he said, when I'm dressed up like this, and you dressed up like this, and the, the presenter, the TV presenter, he was dressed up the same thing, Hajj clothes. You don't know how much is in my pocket, and I don't know how much is in your pocket. We are equal. The equality can be seen in the hajj, in the clothes. The equality can be seen in the prayer when we stand together. He could be the king amongst us. He cannot step just a bit forward because he's a king. No, no, no. Unless he's an imam. He cannot step. He has to be lying feet by feet. The person beside him, he could be a floor sweeper or a rubbish collector or remover, I should say. Yet he's the king because it's nothing like, oh, you have to have him the king's space now. So when he goes there, so he cannot have a special white cloth or, no, it's the same one, okay? Same white cloth, so nobody knows he's a king unless when he's surrounded by other people. But look at the equality. Islam to show us that there is, no, uh, there is no difference between us except by the message, what we carry in our heart. Alhamdulillah, but even though we find in some of the Muslim countries or some of the Muslims who are not being brought up properly, they still look at others differently. And even I've seen some of those who are calling themselves students of knowledge, unfortunately, Allah Musta'an, I have seen a person who's saying, how can I marry somebody like this who is a, such and such color? Because it's a different color. How can I? And then he brings me a hadith. And this hadith <laughs> is actually uh, fabricated. Prophet ﷺ, he forbade for us to marry the black woman. It is, exists, by the way, in the book. It exists in Da'if al Jama. But it's fabricated. So when you brought up in an environment, that breeds billah racism, okay? Uh, uh, the prayer and the deen, alhamdulillah, comes to demolish that. So you come to the masjid with, with that. MashaAllah, that person whom 
you think that he's a different color, different status, different rank, he's still going to come next to you. So that would remove all of that thing. Um, a person who has been brought up like this and then later on learned and something came up, it might bring him back to his past. So if you came from an environment, okay, like Abu Dhar radiallahu anh, he came from an environment from Jahiliya. Okay. When he became a Muslim, it's not in a one go, one sort of flip a switch and that's it, everything will be removed. There will be something lingering there. So one day he speaks ill about the mother of a companion. So the Prophet he said, Ayyartahu bi ummi. Did you defame him with his mother? You said, in the mother, you are the son of the mother and also your mother is such and such. He said, you are a person, you have jahiliya in you. Jahiliya means something from their priest, like condemning him to Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu arba. So, you know, so we, we, but he did not, for example, say Abu Dhar away from the, you are a kafir. So we have to know and understand that some of those who were, mashallah, students of knowledge and mashayikh and whatever, remember, they came from a background like this, even though they were born Muslim, akhi, or born non-Muslim, but become Muslim. The environment affects the person, how the people look at the other race, okay? It all clingers to the heart. What is in the heart, okay? There's arrogance there, pride. So we have even amongst the, uh, even amongst the whites, there is ranks as well. So uh, let me just speak about, from the Pakistani, I have a community, when I was um, trying to get somebody married to somebody else, so uh, he said to me, uh, uh, such and such, my daughter is from such and such. Tell them it's from such. I said, so what? He said, no, she's Chaudhry. I said, what is my Chaudhry? I didn't understand that. And you are from the God, for example. He said, no, they know. So they know, subhanAllah. I don't know. and I don't want to know. So if it's from this clan, oh, they are highly, they've got, uh, like the army, they've got something extra. Yeah, subhanAllah. This is what the Islam came to demolish. There is no difference between us except by the taqwa. Yes, you come from a nice family, a family like which is not known to be a racist family, a family which is not known to be a family of a fahisha. Like, for example, the people who had seen Maryam, she came up with a child. They seen and they said to her, Oh, Maryam, ma kana abuki in wa ma kanat ummuki your father was not a bad man, nor your mother, she was a hornet, a, har sorry, a harlot, means a prostitute. That means you're accusing her of fornication. But you, how can it be a fornicator? When your father was not a good, was a righteous man. And your mother, she was not a fornicator. It shows that the fornication runs in the lineage. So yes, it, yes, we choose the right person, but not based upon a color. Not because based upon a race. He comes from such and such race. Black, Chinese, whatever. La farq. There is no, you have to take that out of your heart. It's very hard, but you have to take it and submit. There is no difference. So what is taking place in America? To show you, everything is built fragile, not built upon solid ground. Anything can, anything can fall like that. Subhanallah. I've been seeing the video clips of those people who are making the, uh, the riots there. I can't, can't call it demonstrations. There's no such thing called peaceful demonstrations. It's rubbish and looting and all of that, and how all the streets have been boarded in New York. This is the so-called civilization. Okay. They need, wallahi, a teaching from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They need that, then they will learn. Okay. And an Islamic country will never, this will never happen. Wallahi, it will never happen. This race. You must have seen some of them as well, some of you, that how a person, not showing his face, shooting an old black man, just like they shot him, cold-blooded. What type of heart? Is this person? What type of human being is this person? Did you brief him with the questions? Yeah, Ahmed, Jazakallah khairan. We've got only 20, 20 minutes, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum, ya shaykhi. Okay, so today's priority is for St. Albans. So if everybody could raise their hand and priority is for St. Albans. We have a bunch of questions from the sisters, alhamdulillah. So the first one is from St. Albans. A sister is asking, is it from the sunnah to shave the newborn baby's head if it's a female or is it just for a male? Uh, 
hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where it says that on the seventh day you shave his head. And the hadith, which is another one, which says that Amitu Anhu al Ada, remove the harm. So the hair for the child at the beginning is a harm. It is actually includes male and female. I know what Sheikh Ibn Uthameen had said. I don't know what Sheikh Al Albani had said. Rahimahumullah. Allah will have mercy upon them. For verily, Sheikh Al Albani says it's for male and female. It's general text and it's there, okay, and it is to be implemented. What Ibn Uthameen he said, we didn't have any sort of conveying of a girl that her hair has been shaved. Okay. Um, so that, that is why he just limited that to the male. Because there was no uh, female being mentioned that her hair has been mentioned, been shaved. But we say, first of all, there is no such thing that the girls being taken to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ did not shave their hair. The Prophet ﷺ said that in general. And we have to understand it just like Um Salama understood the hadith. Uh, sorry, not Um Salam, Um Atiyah. Radiallahu Um Salam or Um Atiyah. Um Atiyah could be Allahu Alam. When she heard the Prophet ﷺ, what is below the ankle is in the hellfire. That means you are in the hellfire because below the ankle. So she straight away, she understood this is not just for males, for females as well. It's a messenger of Allah. So what about the women? Is it the same? She said, no, no. They will let go of a handspan from the ankles below. Messenger of Allah, when they walk, maybe her legs will show. So you're khina shibra, two handspan. Not more than that. So this hadith is, takes about, talks about general. So the shaving of the head is for male and female because it's a harm. Harm, we're talking about physical, and the physical harm does not distinguish between a male or a female. So Allah Ta'ala, the correct opinion is that males and females are to be shaved their heads. Now. Another question from the sisters in St. Albans. Is lying restricted only to the free? And she mentions number one, war, number two, between spouses, and number three, to reconcile between hearts. Is there any more? The lying? The lying of the hadith had basically been mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet, the lying, which is permissible. Lying between wife and husband or husband and wife to please themselves is not really lying as in I promised her to go and give her a car and I did not go and give her a car. That's not, this is called lying. It's to please her. For example, that, you know, the kitchen smell or the food, the food tastes horrible and you say, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, very nice. It could be better. Okay, so that is to please her because if you said food is disaster, you're going you're gonna to sleep outside the house. So that is the, what is meant. And also to reconcile. Processing is not a liar, the one who reconciles between two disputing brothers. So you're not a liar. If you, for example, this person is saying something bad about that person, you go to that person and say to him, MashaAllah, he was praising you and he was saying good words, and he was not. That he's not a liar. And also the, 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 the lie which is in war, war is deception. War is based upon deception. Lying here is that Deception, which is within the deception that is not a treachery. I cannot say something to another person and give him my word for my enemies, send me a messenger, and then when he comes, I kill his messenger. But that's not allowed. Once I give my word, I have to uh, honor my word. But if I did not give my word, then war is based upon deception because I'm in war with you. Now. You mentioned yes. three. You mentioned three, isn't it? Okay. Yes, Sheikh. So all of those lies are to be okay allowed but also yani, the person can lie in, in in circumstances as well which are extreme to save his life like Ammar ibn Yasir he lied by saying things against the Prophet where he loves the Prophet he lied he said things which are not true because they told him to say against Muhammad to save himself so because he wanted to save himself he said lies but he thought that those lies are not tolerable. Allah will not forgive him. So when they let him go on, he saw the Prophet He just started to realize what is a big major mistake he has done. Okay, So that is why uh, 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 he said to the Prophet what he had done. The Prophet said, no, keep that. 
if they come back to you, do the same thing. That means lie. Say against me something, which is the kufr. At the time of Imam Ahmad, when they were tried against khalq al-Quran, that you have to say the Quran is makhluq. All the scholars save Imam Ahmad, and very few. All of them, like Ali ibn Madini at that time, they said, oh, Quran makhluq. They lied. Because they want to save themselves. Now. Jazakallah khairan. Sister from St. Albans is asking that when she sneezes and uh, she says Alhamdulillah, is this uh, obligatory or is this a sunnah of the Prophet When she sneezes, she should. Man atasa falyahmadillah. You should. It's a must. Is that the question? If you sneeze, you must. Yes, Shaykh. And the person who hears it, Alhamdulillah. Okay, that was this question from St. Albans from the sisters. We'll go to the uh, Rahib now in the queue and then we'll go back to the sisters, inshallah, after. There's no St. Albans questions, St. Albans. They're finished from uh, the written ones and I don't think anyone in the queue is from St. Albans, Sheikhi. Okay, here, inshallah. So I'm going to unmute you, Rahib. No, you don't have to mute him. He will mute himself. Okay, Sheikh. Okay, let me. Yeah, Habibi. Where's the best place? Again, sorry, 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 I unmuted you. Unmute yourself, unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Salam alaikum. I could hear you now, yes. Uh, where is the best place we can learn the authentic du'as of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that you've mentioned in the class? Okay. There's a book called, and it's an English version of it, Ad-Dua min al-Kitabi wa sunnah Okay, this is... From Sayyid ibn Ali al-Qahtani, he had got made like Hassan al Muslim and he made this book as well. It's called Dua. This is a small one in your pocket. Also, you could download it from your, mashallah, smartphone. Lots of, uh, uh, for example, as well, Sahih al Kalim al Tayyib from Sheikh al Albani. It's Tab ibn al Qayyim, but Sheikh al Albani made the check in of it. Sahih al Kalim al Tayyib. Sister from St. Albans is asking if, because Aisha, Salatul Isha is late, can she read Suratul Mulk before the Salah? If she's going to pray the Isha, she should read Suratul Mulk after. But if she's not going to read the Isha, because, see, I, for example, I now decided to make the children combine Maghrib and Isha and uh, straight away sleep after that, because Isha is very late. It's quarter past 11 here in, in, in Maidenhead. Because of that, I make them to make them say everything before Aisha. So if she's one of those things, one of those people, yes. But if she's going to be praying Aisha, she does her so mulk, inshallah, after Aisha. Now. Okay, uh, Masoud, please go ahead, brother, from USA. Yalla, Masoud, unmute yourself and speak, please. Okay, there's something wrong with your microphone. So Faisal, please go unmute yourself, Faisal. Fazal. Uh, right. I'm, I'm sorry to have you. Okay. Yeah. Why well, are you taking a long time to unmute yourself? No, I don't know if you guys were unmuting me, but um, I'm, I, can you hear me now? Assalamu alaikum. So I said from the beginning, nobody's unmuting you. You're going to unmute yourself. Okay. Everybody has to unmute himself because some, we cannot do that. I have realized that you can't do that now. So first of all, my apologies. Shit, if I'm praying on my, I'm lying down, I'm praying because I'm sick and I'm praying on my back or on my side, where should my leg be facing? Should, be, should they be facing the Qibla? It's not your legs, it should be. So, so, so you are, so if you are, for example, this is the Qibla of yours, okay? Yes. So, and you are, you are in back, so your legs will be towards the Qibla and your head is towards the Qibla. So your eyes like this towards the Qibla. On your side, the same thing. Jazakallahu khairan, Shaykh. Thank you. Yakumullah. Sister from St. Albans is asking if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbids sleeping between Fajr and sunrise and Asr and Maghrib and Maghrib and Isha. There is no forbidding of any of those times to sleep, but there is a hadith which is not authentic. He who sleeps after the Asr and his mind has been taken away, then no, don't blame anybody except for yourself. This is fabricated hadith. We do have, by the way, that is, 
the sleeping after Maghrib, which is the prohibition. That is because this is disliked. Disliked. Why? Because you're not going to be able to pray the Isha. Okay? And I know for a fact, physically speaking, that if you pray after Maghrib, uh, sorry, if you sleep after Maghrib, you're going to get a headache when you wake up. So uh, sleeping after Asr is no problem. Sleeping after Dhuhr, no problem. Sleeping after uh, the, the sunrise, and other, no problem. But between Maghrib and Isha, because you might not, but if you are uh, uh, able to set an alarm to make sure that you're going to pray the Isha on time, there's no problem. It, it, the, 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 the dislike is just because you're not going to be praying Isha. Maybe a possibility. No. Jazakumullah khairan. Go ahead, Abdullah. Yalla Abdullah, unlock yourself, please, and quickly ask your question. Yalla Abdullah. There's some people having trouble to unmute themselves. Okay, Abdullah 105, please. Abdullah 105. Can you just check the settings? A few people are saying that they can't unmute themselves. Um, uh, the settings, okay. Um, 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 okay. I don't know who change it. Okay. Start with Abdullah. Abdullah, unmute yourself. Abdullah, Abdullah 105. Abdullah. Abdullah, not 105. Father, yeah. Abdullah. Father. Um, uh, what was my question? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. So um, a few classes ago, you sneezed um, in the class and you said, Alhamdulillah. Um, should, should the listeners have to say, Yerhamakullah? And is it different if it's a recorded class? Okay. No, you should not say, Yerhamakullah. So... Uh, <laughs> It's only when you hear the person, so you should, there is no such thing. So uh, if you heard somebody say, machine said to you, Assalamu alaikum, you don't say to the machine, wa alaikum assalam. And I remember a joke of this is that uh, the uh, Sheikh uh, Saleh al Fuzan, he was asked a question if you had heard the Musajjil, which is the recorder, reciting. Surat is sajda, or an ayah has got sajda. Any surah has got sajda. Sujood means, sujood tilawa. Should we prostrate? He said, yes, if the device prostrate, then prostrate. <laughs> <laughs> if the device, I mean the, the recorder, or the laptop, the prostrate, then prostrate. That means you should not the prostrate. No, now. 105. Sheikh, sorry, he, he asked that question about the recording, but he also asked in the class we were with you, he was there. So uh, should we say it to Sheikh? Sheikh, in the Zoom, the Zoom. Yeah, when he was live with you and you yeah. sneezed. Live class, yeah. Can you just ask me? I, I understood the question, Ahmed. Barakallah, Fik, Sheikh. <laughs> he asked me, I know. So if I'm listening to his, <laughs> Yerhamukallah, no problem. No, Yerhamukallah. It's only Yerhamukallah if you were <coughs> yourself. And I'm allowing everybody to say that. And you say, Alhamdulillah, because it will be incumbent upon me to say to you, Yadikullah, But because you are just now only to listen, okay, there is no Yarhamukallah. Okay, only Yarhamukallah if there is an interaction between me and you. It doesn't matter live or not live, if there is an interaction. But if I'm blocking everybody, okay, there is no Yarhamukallah. Arakalafik. Abdullah 105, please go ahead, brother. Uh, Sheikh, regarding uh, the shahud, I mean, you explained it very well last time, but uh, just one thing. I know we have two hadith. One it says uh, there is a movement which is vibrating the, the finger, and the other one which is stand still finger. Can we say with that one, I mean, we can do it once. You can, like, you're allowed to, I mean, it's going to be movement finger, and the other one we do it is like in the other time, just, you know, stand still finger. Okay. Does it in that, this one? That, that that is if there is a difference between that and the movement. You see, the person who described it, okay, standing, he did not negate it was not moving. He described part of it. So if it was something different, yes, if you for example, one says he did not raise up his finger, and once he says he raised up his finger, these are two different things. We cannot combine between them. Then we say, like we said, sometimes we don't raise our fingers, sometimes we raise our finger. But if one describes something by something and the other one describes the same thing, something by another thing, and yet they are one thing, then we do it the same. Because this one includes raising plus moving. The other one is called raising, but he did not say, he did not say that he was not moving. But there is a narration where it says he does not move it, we said it's not authentic. Okay? No, I'm Sheikh Barakalafi, Sheikh. 
she, uh, sister is asking Sheikh about um, if she has days left over from Ramadan, if she can fast a while before that, and also if she can save her Ramadan fast until uh, later in the year. Now she stuck with Ramadan, as Abu Bakr he said, Allah will not accept your obligatory until, uh, your voluntary until you finish your obligatory. Abu Bakr said that, radiallahu anhu. So you start with your obligatory, and it doesn't matter if it took you outside the month of Shawwal, you do the month of Shawwal into the month of Dhul Hijjah, the following, the following month, Dhul Qadr, sorry. So you, as long as you don't delay, as long as you don't delay, Zakallahu khairan. Because I know that some of the some of you that they will they will delay the Ramadan till the winter. You can't do that. You have to do it as fast as you can. Go ahead, please, Abu Yusuf. Sheikh, in Surah Al Kaf, um, regarding the two men, the rich and the poor man, did the latter make dua against the rich man for him to lose his property, or was it, 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 did it just happen out of? Um, um, out of mere coincidence or time. So was it a dua he made so that he could realize the truth? Or did he just lose his uh, his property? That's what I want to just get a clarification. Allahu yeah. A'lam. Allahu A'lam. Now, sister wants to know if joining protests and demonstrations is allowed as she sees a lot of sisters in the United Kingdom and the United States and other places they do things like this. They do like what, like, like what? Sorry, I missed the first one because it's not a very clear line. I apologize. It, Bismillah. It's about the demonstrations oh, and yeah. protests. Is that allowed? Is that something we we are allowed to do? Okay, demonstrations. That's a, that's the word which was not really it was a crickling in my device. The demonstration is allowed. <clears throat> demonstrations and protests and all of those things, even though they are permitted by the regime which is governing. It is not from the Islamic way of expressing your objection. This is taken from the West. And you know that the West and the Westerners, they're not really successful. They give you the, free, the freedom of speech, okay? The freedom of speech, but they don't give you the freedom of thought. Here we find that demonstration is basically is a relief, but yet we can't find very hardly that the demonstration number one was absolutely 100 percent no violence and number two we can't find that most of the demonstration had fulfilled what they wanted the, the biggest demonstration that we had for example in this era was against the war in iraq it's a huge demonstration there's nothing the biggest in europe was here Trafalgar square in london We're talking about more than three million it's a huge one Yet already the government had decided that they will participate and their army almost there in Iraq, in Kuwait, on the border. So I'm just saying, to them. so you, you say whatever you like and we do whatever we want. This is democracy, basically. You say whatever you like. You're free, freedom of speech, but we do whatever we like. Um, the only maybe uh, you could say, I would say democracy, I've just seen it working, which is the only done with brexit brexit is subhanallah i don't know how they, they let the people to vote usually they will do whatever they like so they let them to vote and they uh and they lost what they wanted basically they wanted they thought something else and they lost it and the people decided something else it's not true that if you let everybody who knows and he doesn't know to go and vote it's not true because he will vote according to what is being fed according to his background the vote and on all of this consultation has to be within the senior people, the ones who've got common sense. These are the ones who are going to run the show, not people that don't know anything. You just go and vote. Vote for what? You don't know anything, actually. You're just really a person who's a slave of this media. You're going to vote for what? So, there must be uh, there is noise, Ikhwan. There is noise. Okay, Sheikh, sorry, that was Masoud. No. So, demonstration, Ikhwan, is actually. Um, it's not from the Islam. Even in an Arab country, it's called coup against the governor. Khuruj. But in non-Muslim countries, even they permitted, we don't really. Even if the Muslim leader had permitted to do that, like Muammar Gaddafi at this time is a joker. Okay, he permitted that. We don't really go ahead. Because, as I said, it does not fulfill anything. And there's no 100% violence-free demonstrations. 
we have people who are just take advantage and loot Allah al-Musta'an. You remember the demonstration that we had against the raising of the, uh, the, the fees of the university for the students. People robbed the, the places. They have brothers nicked uh, sort of uh, laptops and one of the brothers said, brother, Yachi, what, what is this? He had a nicked laptop. <laughs> and he said, this is war booty. War booty? Allah al-Musta'an. So uh, haram. This laptop is haram. He took it just. He took it from Samsung. I can't remember which company. Chaos. Revolution is confusion. Now, you will go to Masoud if he can't unmute. We'll go to Harif. Inshallah. Barakallahu fikum. Uh, Sheikh. Uh, so I live in New York City. Uh, alhamdulillah, our local masjid is open. Uh, but in New York City, because of the demonstration, uh, there is a uh, the government put cur curfew. So, which means that you're not supposed to go outside from eight o'clock at night to uh, five o'clock in the morning. So the Maghrib over here, we pray Maghrib at 8.23ish. And so my question is, can we combine Salatul Maghrib and Salatul Isha together because of the curfew uh, the government has put? Uh, right, the, the, what does the Imam do? What does the so Imam we right now we combine, we Right now we are combining Maghrib and Isha. Because so of the curfew. You asked him in already, you're combining. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not me, it's the, it's the Imam making it. I was just wondering if the ruling if is. If the uh, Imam is making it, you do it with him. If the Imam is making it, you do it with him. Regardless of what we say to you, this is a valid combination or not. You don't leave, you do it with him. No, yeah. But if you don't believe in this combination, you could just do your Isha at home when you go home. Okay? All right? Okay. So, all, all the time, Ikhwani, when you are with the Imam and the Imam decided something, you are with the Imam. Okay? And then when the Imam uh, is finished, you leave because you don't, you don't want to use unite, use unite. And then you go home and then you pray your Isha if you think it's valid. Now, when a curfew, is that, does that mean allow us, for example, for example, we have extreme rain or extreme snow. And we could make combination of Maghrib and Isha because it is very hard for us to get back to the masjid are we allowed to do it in the curfew of course no problem so if there's a government had a, because it's a, it's a it's a haraj and abdullah ibn abbas was asked why did he combine between maghrib and isha and dhuhr and asr he said Arada an la yuhrija ummata. he wanted not to put his ummah into embarrassment into into uh, difficulty so um, because of now coming back to the issue is impossible say no problem Maghrib and Isha at that time, inshallah, and that would be okay. But let's say that you don't believe in that. You do that with Isha with him, and you go home, and you pray your own Isha at home. Okay? I mean, let me just tell you how, how we are as Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Salaf, we care about the unity in the right way. Sheikh Al-Albani was asked regarding the Fajr prayer in our masajid. Some of the masajid, as soon as the Adhan goes on, 15 to, for 10 minutes later, they make the Iqama. Whereas the Minister of Endowment, they said, no, you have to make the Iqama at least 25 minutes after the, the, the Adhan. The Iqama, the Jama'ah, 25 minutes after the Adhan. Now, they've done this for a reason. Because their Fajr Adhan is, you know, is linked to this uh, calendar, which is not correct. And with the Sheikh Al-Bani observations and other students, our Isha in some places, it will not take place until 17 minutes had passed after the Adhan. Okay? So this masjid, this particular masjid, used to make the Iqama 10 minutes, which is still night. That means the prayer is invalid. So the Sheikh al-Bani was asked about this. Did he say, well, pray at home, khalas, don't pray because it's invalid? No, he said to him, pray with them, the Jama'ah, and go home and do the Isha, uh, the Fajr at the time, at the right time. Just to concern, concern ourselves with the Jama'ah, the unity. A sister wants to know if you could I, I want to ask if, uh, no, Firasat is here. Firasat is here. Put your hands up, please, Firasat. Firasat, are you here, Ya Habibi? Five. Because we have, Firasat, is he there? Did he put his hands up? Right. Because of that, I just ask Harith to be the last question. Okay, and that's it. Fadal Ya Harith. Sheikh, um, is there, uh, did the companions uh, used to fast Shawwal? Because um, there's some opinions from the Malikis or the, 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 from at least some of them that they say, for example, that it's actually not from the companions that to fast the months of Shawwal. I just want to understand why, they, why some opinions say that 
uh, Ramadan is sufficient and to add Shawwal is like adding to Ramadan basically. We don't, we don't, first of all, that to search for companions did fast or not is beside the point because we have the big river, the river of Allah. And that is Prophet ﷺ saying that he who fasts Ramadan follows it up with six days of Shawwal is like he fasted the entire year. I don't need the practice of anybody on this because it's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ standing by itself. It stands by itself. So maybe we didn't have any, can be, I'm, so, I'm talking about if this is true, if this was true, that we don't have, for example, any companions being conveyed upon him that he was fasting the six days of Shawwal, but it doesn't mean that you should not fast the six days of Shawwal. Prophet of Allah, he died with this hadith, he who fast Ramadan, for example, six days of Shawwal. So uh, uh, the madhahib, you know, they depend upon this madhahib, for example, they don't have this hadith, which is he who fast the month of Ramadan, Follows it up with six days of Shawwal, it's like he fasted the entire year. Because if it is the hadith, khalas, it stands by itself. Now, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam, wa subhanakallah bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu alaykum wa barakallahu alaykum.